This week's Torah portion tells us the cautionary tale of the twin brothers, the patriarch Jacob, Yaakov, and Esau, with whom he didn't end up getting along real well. When I read that story, I can't help but think that there are no guarantees in life. No guarantees that my own twin boys will continue to get along as well as they do now, while young, as they age. Every parent of more than one child has to constantly pray for sibling harmony. Because when siblings don't get along, it's tragic. It's devastating. Go back to the beginning. Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel. We know what happened in that story. After that, Yitzchak and his brother Yishmael. Yaakov and Esau from this week's Torah portion. And what we're going to see soon, Yosef, Joseph, and his brothers. That fractured relationship, the sale of Yosef by his brothers, led directly to our enslavement in Egypt. But when siblings, brothers, sisters get along, it's magic. There's nothing more heartwarming. Think of how we got out of Egypt. It was through a fraternal relationship that went right. Aharon, Aaron, an older brother, deferring to his younger brother Moses, Moshe. And that's what Yitzchak had in mind when he planned in this week's Torah portion to give the blessings originally to Esau. He thought Esau would look after, take care of his brother Yaakov. But his wife Rivka, the mother of the twins, knew better, knew that Esau wasn't going to go along with that plan. So she had to resort to trickery to figure out a way for Yaakov to get those blessings. And after that event, when Esau plans to kill his brother Yaakov, Rashi, the greatest of the commentators, tells us that Esau plans to estrange himself from Yaakov, that he regrets the fraternal relationship, meaning that they had a relationship. They did originally get along. Of course they did. They were twin brothers. You can't help but think it's so painful to consider how different our history would have been had they continued to get along, had Esau not gone off the rails to a life of wickedness. Over the course of the last couple weeks, I got to see brotherhood as it's meant to be. I was in Israel when my wife and I were gifted with another grandson. We got to see the welcome that he got from his older brother, one of our older grandchildren. It was beautiful. Hello, baby. And I was in Israel in order to lead a Momentum men's trip, three busloads of Jewish fathers from across the world. We not only grew as Jews, as husbands, and as fathers, but over the course of the week that we spent together, we became a band of brothers. We spent some incredibly powerful, emotional, moving, spiritual moments together. Ten of us celebrated as adults bar mitzvahs on Masada. We also shared moments together that were just plain fun, floating in the Dead Sea. And for example, when the group from Milwaukee discovered that the guys from Sydney also call a water fountain a bubbler, who would have thunk it? Like this and you press the button and you, and you drill what, what is that? I was reminded of a few years ago when I met a fellow attorney and he told me that he'd just come back from his first trip to Israel and he really enjoyed it. But one thing really bothered him, the weird questions that they ask at the airport. I said, what questions? He said, well, they ask you if you packed your own bag or if you took anything from anybody. I get that. They're worried about terror attacks. I said, yeah, what else? He said, well, they asked me this ridiculous question. They said, which community are you from? And I said to myself, why is that weird? Just tell them which Jewish community you're from. And he said, what am I supposed to tell them? 23rd Street and 3rd Avenue? Here is a Jew living in Manhattan all alone, not part of a Jewish community. And that's painful because all of us as Jews are guarantors for each other. We have to make sure to reach out to our Jewish brothers and sisters so that every single one of us feels not just part of a local Jewish community, but part of a beautiful global one. <laughs>